Welcome. It's another edition of Your Image Public Relations Program on TV. Last week, we were talking about abating substance abuse in the society. And I had with me a guest, uh, Pastor Anthony Agbemodia Agbebo, a health, education, and drug abuse uh, prevention director in the Neuropsychiatric Hospital, Aro Abekuta. Thank you for being with me. It's a pleasure, sir. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Um, this week, I have the privilege of being added onto, and I have with me Olori Amino Adileye Mate Milola, the Olori of Olowo of Owo, His Majesty, Oba Professor Saka, Adilola Mate Milola, the Olowo of Owo Kingdom. Madam, you're welcome. Thank you for having me, sir. It's a pleasure having you, and thank you for all you've been doing on the issues of drug abuse and the advocacy issues. Thanks, um, the two guests are with me, and uh, we will continue our discussion. And uh, just recently, you launched a foundation called Solace Foundation on Substance Abuse and mental health advocacy group. Um, can we have a knowledge on why you came up with such a, a project? Um, well, when um, KBC um, resumed um, office, because um, I would say that um, his work really is office work, uh, when he resumed to serve his people, he, um, the first thing that came to his mind was um, the youth, and that has been a burning issue, really, even in Nigeria as a whole. And um, one of the issues that we have with um, uh, with our people generally is um, also the use of um, substance um, substances and um, and abusing it, of course. And this is um, invariably causing a lot of mental health issues. We've seen quite a number of people uh, because of the substance abuse do uh, um, um, very funny funny uh, situations, you know, that they found themselves and um, we watching them, of course, know that it is because of the abuse of, uh, uh, of these um, uh, drugs. And so um, swinging into action to ensure that um, these um, our, our youths, you know, are, are directed properly and guided well, so, so such that um, we can have um, a better society to live in. Uh, I'd like to ask you, uh, the area of intervention yes. is unique. And uh, is, does it have any connection with the academic knowledge that uh, the other processes that has made this kind of uh, research and uh, looking into the critical area of need in the society, does it have any effect? Well, um, the truth is, um, uh, it goes without saying, sir, very honestly, that um, we need to begin to care for ourselves and our people. Um, um, the truth is, he, he, he thought about this uh, mainly because he knows uh, very well that um, uh, we have a lot of issues in this area, and the earlier we address it, the better for all of us in the society. You know. So um, it is out of the fact that um, in Nigeria today, or in the world today, is either you have an uncle, or a sister, or a brother, or a cousin, or even the individual having been a user before, and then um, changing um, his or her ways. And so um, um, y y one can't shy away from it. And I, and I believe that's the reason why you know, everybody finds, um, uh, finds it important, or KBC did find it important to, 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 to actually deal with. Because um, it's not only the user that actually um, gets himself um, burnt, <coughs> but the relatives of the user e are even more disturbed than even the user because hardly does he, he or she even know what is happening to them you know it is those who are seeing them that are even affected the most so that must be you know a, a, a major reason why anybody at all should 
you know, want to look into this issue and address it. Pastor Gwebo, the neuropsychiatry hospital must be very happy to have a partner in the Solis Foundation. Yes. Uh, I want to ask you, um, is there any connection between uh, substance abuse and mortality rates in the nation? Well, we, there is no much connection because substance abuse is uh, a chronic relapsing illness. It doesn't kill so easily, but it, it incapacitates the individual and make the individual not to be able to function in what he's doing. It takes time before the person dies. Uh, it's not an illness that just kills suddenly. I said the person goes into overdosage of whatever substance he or she is consuming. But like Olori said, the individual problem will rub on the, not just the individual, but the family, the immediate neighbors, the society. Every, everybody, you know, substance abuse problem is everybody's problem. Because when someone is on drug, they will look for money to sustain the habit. If they cannot find, they will steal from the family. If they can't find from the family, they go to the neighbor. And then they can become violent, they could rape, they could do all manner of criminal things. And so, at the end of the day, it, you know, it snowballs on everybody. I asked that, that question because uh, on the video that was uh, illustrated during the launch of uh, Solace Foundation, we found out that uh, some individuals were knocking their heads on the wall yeah. and they were doing extra ordinary things yes. with the intake of uh, that uh, drugs yeah. or substance abuse. Yeah. Uh, what are the implications of such actions? The individual will suffer a severe head injury like that. Okay, They could have a uh, uh, cause other people to have an accident. They then say, uh, uh, you know, they get involved in a lot of multiple accidents, and then they could uh, actually kill. They commit a lot of homicide. But funny enough, a lot of them escape it. They could kill people and still be alive. And they will be arrested. They will be tried and all that. And so it, they themselves, they will, they have a way of of protecting themselves. Except when they revert to violence, you know, from uh, court group or from a rival group in the joints, then where did they could stab themselves to death. But the drug use is such that those who are indulging it, they have a way of getting their body to get used to it over time. So it will capacitate them, but will not necessarily kill them immediately. Like that man, there are people who sympathize and arrest him and take him to the hospital and all that, and you may be surprised he will survive it. Okay. Well, um when you look back, until recently, we've been having a minor issues concerning drug abusers, I mean, drug, uh, concerning drug uh, abuse going into some deadly activities. Yeah. Why is it rampant now? It's rampant now because a lot of people have access to the internet. Children, youth generally, and in the school, and then they fraternize with their peers all over the world, just at the click of a button. And most of these things, they learn them on the internet. Where there was a situation that happened somewhere in town, I think it's up to two years now, a year ago, where a young chap beheaded the girlfriend. And he said they learned it online, how to do that. And that is how they learn most of these things. Most of these drugs are not actually produced here. Okay, but they get access to them. You can order some of these drugs on your phone and then you get delivery. And that is the, is the problem of the, of the age, really. The, the, the IT world has opened up the world and made the world a global village so people can learn a lot of things that were not there when we were growing up. Olori, and uh, we really appreciate the effort of the uh, group in coming up uh, with this... Uh, Project. Are you having partners? And now have you been going, connecting with the needed people at this instance, uh, at this crucial time of our nation? Well, um, when we started, um, like, like the name suggests, um, it's uh, Solace Substance Abuse and Mental Health Advocacy Group. 
So we started as a group just to create awareness. So we are not um, exactly in the core business of trying to treat um, substance abuse users or, um, or persons living with, with um, mental health issues. But um, we're just creating awareness, you know. And of course, we're getting some level of partnership with the community members because uh, we decided that it should be community-led because that way, when they take ownership of um, the project, then you would see uh, a bit more commitment from them, you know, on how to um, ensure that they not only create awareness, but um, create that um, environment where we could have, like we had yesterday, um, counselors coming, uh, trained counselors coming to talk to people who are um, abusers, um, substance abuse um, uh, uh, persons, or uh, persons living with mental health um, issues. So um, that's what one way we've been able to uh, make sure that it's community-led and the community has, you know, takes ownership of the project. So we are just um, standing as an awareness group. Support group uh, would be supporting government wherever you know government wants us to support um, in whichever way. What we're doing right now, creating awareness, is supporting government really, you know, too, because government also is at the um, at the helms of affairs concerning you know these issues. Uh, and then um, several other bodies, you know, like the like Arrow, we've been partnering with them, you know, trying to uh, make like we did the training for um, counselors. for counselors, you know. So we partnered with them on that, and we're looking, seeking for people, you know, to come either as an individual or as um, as a group to join us in this. Um, so far, uh, who are your partners? So we have um, NDLEA. We partner with them too. Um, in, in creating this awareness to talking in schools and, and then um, Arrow, like I mentioned before, uh, um, one of um, our partners. Um, we have um, two other private um, you know, um, institutions that um, are also part NGOs that are partnering with us. What of the role of uh, the Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria? Yeah, the Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria have um, featured in a lot of our uh, programs, you know, and we're really very happy about that. Uh, we'll call it a partnership of some sort because every time we call, uh, call on them, they actually, you know, come uh, um, running, you know, to ensure that they deliver their own part of um, their own story concerning, concerning substance abuse and why people shouldn't, you know, um, should stop doing. When you look at uh, your success so far, uh, can you give us maybe those personnel that you are still searching for that can collaborate and uh, help you in this crusade? Well, um, we've kept it open, honestly, sir, uh, because um, it's one thing to call and another for people to, you know, to, um, respond. to respond. So we've kept it very open and not to point accusing fingers at people to say, uh, you ought to be you know, at the forefront of this, uh, but you've left us to do it. We don't want to do that, really. So what we've continued to do is just um, keep it open and continue to talk to people, whether as an individual, whether as a group, whether as, um, you know, concerned individuals, should please come join us and let's um, clean um, our society. Um, Pastor Gebo? Yes, sir. I want to ask you, when you look at the support you've been receiving in the neuropsychiatric uh, hospital, Abel uh, Kucha. What do you advise? What, what, what is your vision to create a better environment where individuals can live in sanity? Well, the, in approaching that, we start with the family. Okay. The family has a, a lot to do. The parents, they have to start by educating their own children and world about the danger inherent in substance use. The child starts from the home before going to the society. And so the parents need to monitor their children and know what they are doing. They create an environment for them that is healthy for them to strive. If a child comes from a background that is uh, full of violence and uh, that is uh, you know, hostile, the likelihood of them going into substance use is very high. Then the school. In those days, we have a lot of activities in secondary school especially. 
you know, youth sports and inter-house sports and, and, uh, and inter-school Extra-curricular activities. Extra -curricular activities. Mm -hmm. There is need to revisit all those things. This will keep the young mind busy and they will have little or no time for such destructive tendencies like going into substance use. Then the government too, uh, the community, the community need to, to create, you know, a healthy competition among the youth in the community. Engage them, especially during the um, holiday period, the festive period, engage them positively. And then let the community leaders who are well loved identify some of these youth and sponsor them. That will encourage a lot of them to see that education is something that one should aim at. Encourage her you know, uh, uh, competitiveness, healthy competitiveness in the community. Not necessarily education alone. If we have an, a, a child who is learning trade and is good at it, a community leader can sponsor such child you know, trade and uh, buy payment for the child, and others will be encouraged. And then when we see those who are deviating, then we should take steps to correct them. Then the government needs to do a lot. We need to put in place things that will make children to want to learn. And then when they are out of school, they will, the government needs to create employment for them. And when we do all of this, then it will, it will help us a great deal. Well, I don't know whose responsibility it is uh, guiding against drug abuse in vocational areas. Uh, we can see that uh, the group of artisans and uh, maybe a lot of uh, entrepreneurs, we found out that a lot of substance abuse is amongst them. Yes. It is prevalent. It is all you can see every day on our streets. You see these Okada riders and the like, the way they behave on the road. Why is it difficult for us to have a system or an organ that will be able to organize such people and make them into productive system? It's our collective responsibility. The Okada riders, the artisans who use this, if you go to new sites where constructions are ongoing, you see a lot of them abusing substances. They buy them from somewhere. And those who are into such trade, they have their shops or kiosk in a home. So someone owns that you know, property. And if, if we see such and we need to talk, we need to you know, correct them, and, we need, and if they are not ready to change, then we have a right to report them to NDLA. Whose but responsibility is it? The landlord who houses the, the shop owner who is selling all these things. Because most of these things are, are not just the socially acceptable alcohol. They go ahead, some of them sell Indian hair and some of these drugs. They inside, they keep them, they hit them. But those who patronize, they know how, they have language. The drug users, are, they live in a, a subculture. They have their language, they have their science, they are very good in non-verbal communications. So they can come in here and be discussing, and you and I may not know. I say you are, you are used to them. So if the shop owner, the landlord or landlady or the caretaker could raise objection to he or she selling such in his premises, and then the Okada owner who gives a young man Okada to ride could raise objection to it, and we find that all these things go a long way. If we leave everything to NDLA or to the government, it will be difficult. Alori, yes. this social perversion, incidences of social perversion that we are experiencing nowadays, why is it difficult for government establishments to curb and control all these individual challenges. And of course you see that in those days, we used to have, maybe in the Ministry of uh, uh, Environment and uh, uh, Social Development and uh, Information, you see a group of officers Goes monitoring yeah. activities with the vicinity yeah. and ensuring that they give feedback to government. And such people, when they were seen, they are arrested or taken to custody. The other issue is the incidences of uh, uh, people with mental health moving around on the streets and uh, 
causing unprovable uh, environment to the nation. Why is it? What, what, what do you advocate to happen so that uh, we can curb our environment of such incidences? Well, again, I'll um, benchmark on collective responsibility. It's everybody's responsibility, really. Because if you say that, um, okay, the landlord um, needs to have um, raised an objection, what if it is the landlord who is selling the drugs? What if it is, you know, the uh, head of um, uh, the, the Okada <laughs> riders that is selling it? What if it's, you know, it, it's, uh, there's a lot of what ifs. So I would rather benchmark on collective, you know, responsibility. Those who are concerned citizens should please come out and speak up. It's very important. We can't continue to sit down and say, well, it doesn't concern us because um, it has nothing to do with any of our children. But these are people that our children will become friends with. You don't want to say that, oh, no, my child will never know um, X, Y, Z, you know. I, I, I know a couple of um, organizers who are my friends, you know, because I take my, my, I mean, I used to take my car to them, you know, so they become my friends. And I, I noticed that some of them um, smoke, um, you know, um, 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 marijuana. And um, I've, I have, you know, once or twice oh, said really? to them, yes, to them, you know, that, uh-uh. She, Martin, you know, in, in our local parlance, now that you're smoking this, will you know what to do with the guys? We said, ah, that's what even makes them, mm. charges them up. I said, no, please, uh, keep this aside, you know, do what you have to do with my car and then let them. But of course, after a while, you're going back to them again to fix the same car. And then you're saying, uh, I told you not to do what you did. And they can cause you damages. Know? And they can cause even more, even to themselves, you know, even to themselves, you know. So. It's a, it's a collective, back in the days, everybody was everybody's parent. Every child was everybody's wow, child. Wow, well, I feel lost it. You know, I, honestly, it's, um, it, it beats me, sir. You know, it's a question that um, if I said to answer it, I may not be doing full justice to it. So it's something that everybody needs to begin to think about. You know, let everybody's child be your child. It, it be, show love, show concern for people, you know. And the truth, again, about this thing is, you know, some people are really going through so much because um, forget peer pressure, well, not forget, sorry, aside from peer pressure and all that, there's some people who actually um, go into taking drugs out of, you know, um, um, having been traumatized, you know. Some people have, been th have passed through some kind of, you know, situation in their life and there's no other way for them to, you know, express themselves or, you know, kind of put some kind of confidence in themselves that to take some of these drugs. Because if you ask them, they'll say, oh, it gives them confidence, you know, it gives them, you know, everybody has their own, um, you know, thing to say about what a um, drug does to them. But the bottom line is that it is gross abuse and should not be um, allowed to fester anymore in our society. Yeah, a good advice at that. Um, let me ask you, how do you advise government and the people? The community need to step up you know, sensitization and mobilization campaign. Like what Oluri is doing and Kabisi at Owu Kingdom. If every kingdom is doing that, every community CDAs are doing that, then it goes a long way. The religious bodies, the churches, the mosques, they need to talk about this. They raise their voice about this. Invite ESPA to come and talk to their members and, uh, about this. Then the government need to collaborate. They have different agencies who are championing the issue of drugs. The custom, the police, the NDLA, the uh, NAVDAG, they all need to work together to fight this? Well, it is a collective responsibility. Every one of us must take up a role, support this project for the betterment of our nation, for the betterment of our future of tomorrow. It's been a wonderful time having the Olori Amina Adeleye Matemilola the Olori of uh, Oluwafu K.
kingdom oba saka adilola matimlola in our midst thank you for bringing succor to the society thank you sir i hope next time we will call on you you come yes sir uh pastor Ogwebo, it's nice having you thanks for your great contribution and uh, we believe that the society must have listened to you until next week my pleasure sir when we come again with another topic it is your image and your anchor is Akio Kudero. Thank you for supporting this project. We have a nation to protect. Thank you and goodbye.